Legend of Total War here, and today we're going to be going through the Steam achievements for Total War Warhammer 3, and it's just a bit of a guide uh, to go through and uh, help you guys out if you're struggling with some of the achievements, and give you some quick tips on how to get them quickly, because I know some of you guys like to rush the achievements to get that also important mastery of the game, um, even though getting all the achievements isn't actually all that difficult. Um, but anyway, this guide might speed things up a bit for you. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through the Steam list here. I've done them all. I don't think any of them are particularly difficult bar one. But I'll tell you how to get them if it's if you're unsure. And uh, what the easiest way to get them if they are a little bit difficult. And uh, any tips and tricks if you want to cheese it. Uh, again, if you want to get them legit, that's entirely up to you. You just do it the way you want to do it, okay? So, first one, the Battle for Boca. So this is easiest done with Katarin. Uh, over um, uh, Kostalton because Katarin starts off with access to Kislev and is it's easier for her to confederate the other um, minor Kislev factions that have access to the other major settlements. So basically, you have to own, you have to be holding on to Kislev, Prague, and Erengrad for 10 turns and then a quest battle marker will open up. Then you fight that battle, it's fairly easy. Um, you can do it in the early game. And... Uh, Win that battle and you'll get Boris Bocker and get this achievement. It's fairly easy to do. You should be able to get this achievement done by turn 30 to 50 um, if you if you manage to get those confederations. Okay, next one. Animated adversary, play a multiplayer battle. So this is one that um, I wanted to cheese because I wasn't really interested in fighting a multiplayer battle. But what I did was I got on a Discord, Discord call with um, Gaming Dane and uh, we just opened up a multiplayer lobby, fought a multiplayer battle, and then that was it. Now, we tried to just jump into a battle and then concede defeat just so it was over, but that doesn't work. You have to fight the battle to its actual conclusion. So just keep that in mind and just save you a couple of seconds. Uh, obliterate the odds. Win a campaign battle in which you are outnumbered 10 to 1. This should happen fairly naturally because of the, the way that the entities work with um, Total War Warhammer in general. So the easiest way to go about this is let's just say you fight... A green skin army and it's just full of gobos which will happen a lot when you go into the darklands right and you don't wipe them out but they're so easy to finish off if you just get like one lord because you'll be outnumbered like 100 to 1 you just get the lord to win that battle and just disband the rest of the army or, or have a lord tag along with you defeat defeat that army with just one lord you know, preferably if you've got a spellcaster. Like, if you're playing at Cinch, you can use the, the pink fire of Cinch to just get rid of him, get rid of all the gobos quite easily. And then you'll get this achievement done. Uh, quest for success, fight a quest battle. Um, Self-explanatory, fight a quest battle. Um, everybody has quest battles except for Cathay Legendary Lords, so it shouldn't be difficult for them. Uh, talented amateur, win 10 battles throughout a single campaign. She should just get that naturally. doesn't need any cheesing or anything like that. Professional tactician, you just need to... Play a bit longer of a campaign. 50 battles doesn't take too long. Uh, the Art of Surprise. Win 5 ambush battles during a single campaign. So this is the easiest done as Stinch. What you want to be doing is using the ambush attack option. Uh, sorry, the teleport stance attack. Uh, and then you just go do that 5 times because that counts. And then you'll just get that achievement quite quickly. Uh, Blazing Besieger. Win 25 siege battle attack battles during a single campaign. That'll just happen naturally as you conquer territory. So just don't sit around doing nothing. Go out. Conquer territory, and you'll get that done. Um, doesn't really matter who you do that with. Uh, the Road to Riches, playing as Cathay, complete a caravan's journey. That's so super easy to do. That'll be get that'll get done between five and ten turns. Easy. Um, Heavens above, playing as Cathay, construct the Grand Observatory of Jingpo. Okay, pretty easy to do. You just need to own this settlement here <laughs> called Jingpo. It's a tier three uh, landmark building. Just remember to build it when you get to tier 3. It, it is a very good building. It increases the recruit ranks and recruit number of astromancers. Uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, landmark. So, yeah. The easiest done probably as... Um, well, either of them. Just confederate the Celestial Loyalists because they start off with it. Um, okay, where were we? We were there. Okay, so playing as Cathay, occupy the entirety of the Great Bastion. That's easiest to do as um, Miao Ying because she's so close to the Great Bastion. Um... Uh, Celestial City secured, playing as Cathay, occupy Wei Jin. Um, easy to do, Wei Jin's over here. The Celestial Loyalists are usually one of the first Cathay factions I confederate. Um, there's some really good landmarks in there for Cathay, so that's definitely a priority for you to confederate. Uh, but again, very easy to do. 
Uh, shoulders of Giants, playing as Cathay, recruit a Terracotta Sentinel into one of your armies. It's probably easiest to do as um, Miao Ying, because you can recruit Terracotta Sentinels from Tier 4 um, Bastion Gate main buildings. So, I usually leave small armies in the Gate Bastion areas, because you can also reduce their upkeep cost by a ton, so it inflates your um, army strength and strength rate ranking. Um, but yeah, you get it to Tier 4, you can build it. It has reduced upkeep cost while it's in that area, as long as you've got that building. And if you don't want it, just want the achievement, then you just disband it. So, really easy to do there. Okay, since Sensational Steed, have a special mount. Very easy to do, just equip any mount of any type onto any character. It's really easy. Same thing with Elevated Excellence, you just need to do it three times. Um, White Hat, have one level 10 hero. You know, I'm pretty sure every single campaign will give you a hero on turn one or two. So, just keep that hero alive, get it to rank 10, easy. Um, uh, Centuries of Excellence have two level 2 heroes at, oh sorry, two level 20 heroes at the same time. Pretty easy to do, just keep your heroes alive. You definitely want to be recruiting some heroes. Um, probably best to do with Kislev, because their heroes are pretty damn good. Uh, the Height of Valor have three level 30 heroes at the same time. Again, probably easier to do as Katarin since they have to fight so many battles and they have access to a lot of, of Patriarchs, which you're definitely going to want to avoid getting rid of um, uh, uh, corruptions in the area because they're good at that. So yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Rising Power have a level 10 Lord. Self-explanatory. Just play a campaign, you'll get that done. Dominating Force, same thing as well. Just play a campaign You'll for more than a few minutes and you'll get there. Uh, Peak Nobility. You know, play a campaign and around turn 50, you should be able to get to a Lord at level 30. The Gatekeeper. Defeat the Demon Prince at the Brass Citadel at the Realm of Corn. So basically, beat the Realm of Corn, beat the Realm of Nurgle, beat the Realm of Slanesh, and then beat the Realm of Sinch. Now, the thing is here, you don't have to fight those battles manually. You can auto-resolve, get those achievements. Currently, I have never actually fought the uh, the Courtesan uh, manually. I've done it like four, eight or nine times now. But every single time I was offered a victory without losing any units. And these survival battles, while they're fun at first, they get tedious really quickly. So I just end up auto resolving it. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. But you can save yourself 45 minutes to an hour, or 30 minutes, whatever, um, by, um, by auto resolving it. Especially if none of your units are going to get wiped out, why bother? Unless you really enjoy those type of battles. Um, tear down the walls, raise one settlement. Easiest to do with Scarbrand since his campaign is all about blowing shit up. Uh, burn down the world, sorry, burn the world. Uh, raise 30 settlements during a single campaign. Very easy to do as Scarbrand. Uh, but you can do it with anyone, but yeah, just Scarbrand will be the easiest for that. Forward position. Uh, construct an allied outpost in a military ally settlement. Probably easiest to do as Katarin since she has a lot of access to many potential military allies with the Empire since they've got very good relations. It's also really easy to get a, um, a military alliance with Castalton, believe it or not. Um, so it's, it's quite easy to do it with her, but really any faction can do that. Uh, most constant votary. Playing as the Demon Prince, ascend to a Chaos God's path. Okay, so... There's a bunch here that you can sort of do at the same time. So, Godly Might Given, playing as a Demon Priest, ascend to the Undivided Path. So, basically, what this means here, this one is either Corn, Slanesh, Nurgle, or or Sinch Path. And this one is sent to the Undivided Path. Now, you can do them both at the exact same time. So, even on Legendary, get your campaign to a point where you can go to, where you can select Undivided, and you can select one of the other ones. Then what you do is make sure you get to that point, save the game by getting into a siege battle, then ascend to Undivided Path, right? That'll immediately unlock the the uh, achievement. Then you load the save file so that you've undone the, the, uh, the, the path, but it doesn't undo the achievement, and then you just do the, uh, the Chaos Gods path. Now, if you wanted to do a specific Undivided Path or a specific path to continue on the campaign, that would be when you load the campaign again and just go down the path that you originally chose but yeah you only need to do one specific path you don't need to do multiple campaigns to do this and um this will just be done as you play throughout a campaign so playing as a demon prince unlock 15 demonic gifts five demonic gifts that'll just be done just play the demonic prince and you'll just get that naturally uh common cause have a military alliance with five other factions at the same time okay so this is one of the more difficult ones to do i think it's easiest done with kislev 
what you want to be doing is being good friends with all the dwarfs and the empire factions um, that are available. You want to be taking out Manfred as quickly as possible and then take out Scrag, because Scrag eliminates a lot of elect accounts. Now, sometimes elect accounts go to war with each other. You can't really do much about that. But in all the dwarfs and all the empire factions in the area, there is it is possible to get more than 10 military alliances, but highly recommend doing it as, um, as Kislev, because you don't really want to do it with the demons and get demonic military allies because they tend to fight amongst themselves sometimes. It'll be very difficult to, to hold 10 military alliances, where it's very easy to do it as, as Katarin. Uh, commercial Comforts have a trade agreement with five other factions at the same time. And then the upgrade version have a trade agreement with 10 other factions at the same time. Easiest to be done as Katarin. She's, well, really, anybody that can trade can get 10 trade agreements. Um, just, you obviously can't do that with any of the demons apart from Slanesh. But getting 10 trade agreements with Slanesh is actually very difficult since there aren't 10 Norskin factions. And getting trade agreements with the Empire is extremely time consuming. So, have a steady stream, have a gross income of 5,000 per turn. Um, that's easy to do. In fact, if you play a campaign on easy difficulty, all you have to do is disband your army because your base income is 6,000. You can just hit end turn and just immediately get it. Um, but then there's other ones here to, to, to get higher amounts. Have a gross income of 20,000. Have a gross income of 60,000. Now, I believe you have to get a gross profit of 60,000. So it actually has to say 60 grand um, in green. So in this particular campaign here with Cinch, um, I'm making 180,000 per turn, right? But I've conquered the entire map. Um, I would say that the richest faction in the game, based on just base income, to just get that number up high, is actually Ogre Kingdoms, because they have uh, camps that provide money, they can make loads of money through trade, they can make loads of money through their, their buildings. Um, either that or Kislev. Kislev actually has a really strong economy. You'd probably need to conquer at least one quarter of the map in order to get a gross income of 60,000 per turn. And then when you get high enough that you can actually do it, just disband all of your armies, hit end turn, make sure you make a backup save file. And then then once you've gotten the achievement, just load load back and continue your campaign. Um, either that or conquer the entire map and, you know, don't have like a ridiculous number of armies. Because at the moment here, I, I do have quite a lot. That's that's what's eating up all my, my income. And, of course, there's the supply line bug, which sucks, which is probably active multiple times on this campaign. Anyway, uh, so into the ether, enter the realm of chaos using a rift. So that should have already been done by the time you did any of the, the corn ones. So that'll just get done naturally, um, if, of course, you even want to do it. But, of course, going into the realm of Slanesh is worth it. So that's the one I would recommend going into first. Uh, the blood must flow. Playing as corn, reach the highest level of bloodletting with an army. Uh, not too difficult to do, that'll just happen naturally, especially with Scarbrand. Just beat lots of armies over and over again, and eventually you reach the highest level of bloodletting. So, the Collector, playing as corn, collect 10,000 skulls. Very easy to do. Um, just play the campaign and you'll get it eventually. Um, Unmaker of Magic, playing as corn, construct the Cadium Paradox. Okay, the Cadium Paradox. Where was that? I, I think... I think it's here, at the Red Fortress. I may just have to load up one of my old corn campaigns to double check that. Where's the one that I did to test it out on? Is it this one? Yeah, it would be this one. I know, I know. We'll come to that in a minute. This is the one that I did other achievements with. So I'm fairly sure it's there, but I just can't remember. Because corn's actually got quite a lot of um, landmarks. So just bear with me here. While that's loading up, let's look at some of the other ones. So the blood is life, playing as corn, recruit a bloodthirster to one of your armies. Uh, so that's not an exalted bloodthirster, just recruit a bloodthirster. So that's a tier 5 unit. It's pretty easy to get to tier 5 as corn. They arguably get there the quickest if you're accessing a lot of uh, bloodletting. Um, yeah, just uh, it doesn't count if you've got a blood host and you just start off with a bloodthirster. That just won't count. Uh, playing as corn, replace the Herald of Corn with an Exalted Bloodthirster. So just get a Herald of Corn to rank 15 and just accept the um, the uh, the dilemma to get a Exalted Bloodthirster. All right, so over here, yeah, there I was right. So the Cadian Paradox. There's the uh, the landmark there. It's only tier two, but you do have a long way to travel to get there. So um, 
You could use a portal to jump over to here and just take it off the dreaded woe. Entirely up to you. But, um, yeah, corner has got the longest distance to go to, to, to get to that particular landmark. Okay. Then, so we've got that one, that one, that one. Okay, Matriarchal Power. Playing as Kislev, invoke each type of motherland in a single campaign. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty easy to do. You should just be able to do that throughout your campaign. Just it, There's four different uh, motherland invocations. Just do one of each. Um, if you're really late into a Kislev campaign, you've got loads and loads of um, devotion. You can actually do all four of them at once, even though... Every time you do one, it'll make all the other ones that you did inactive. Um, because only one can be active at the same at the same time. But you can just override them. Uh, reclaim your pa uh, your place. Uh, playing as Kislev, occupy Kislev, Erengrad, and Prague. So that'll be done as you're trying to do the Battle of Boka quest. So there, there are some achievements that you can essentially do at the same time. Uh, bear with me. Playing as Kislev, recruit an elemental bear into one of your armies. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this works, but... Um, Castalton actually gets a uh, elemental bear to begin with. What you could potentially do is just start the campaign, recruit a lord, and transfer the elemental bear into into a different army, and then transfer it back. I don't know if that's if that will work because I actually recruited the elemental bear without playing Castalton, um, and so I got it that way. But yeah, it's a tier five unit. They're not that difficult to get. It's pretty quick to get to tier five. Um, but that's a potential way of cheesing it. Uh, let me know if that does or doesn't work. Uh, arms appropriated. Uh, borrow an army from mi military ally. Okay, so if you want to do this one, you need to get a military ally with a major faction. Because if you do, like, if you're playing as Kislev and you military ally empire, right, they tend to only recruit one army and you can't take it off their faction leader. So what you, but well, what you can do is wait for their faction leader to get wounded. They'll recruit another lord and uh, it's cheaper if they just have like one lord. It's, um, more expensive if it's, a, if it's a full stack. But if you military ally with a major faction, um, such as if you're playing as Kislev and ally with, I don't know, Greasus Goldtooth, um, he tends to have loads and loads of armies. You can just take one of his. Uh, that's not actually uh, owned, owned by Greasus. So, uh, partners in Conquest, play a multiplayer campaign. This one here is very cheesable. So, all you have to do is fight, have a partner, jump into a multiplayer campaign of any type. Uh, you'll immediately get the achievement just for loading up the campaign. And then if you don't actually want to play the multiplayer campaign, just quit out of it. So I did that with Gaming Dane at the same time that we did um, the multiplayer battle. That's how I cheesed the the multiplayer stuff. I haven't didn't actually fight any multiplayer stuff at all, but I've got the multiplayer achievements. Um, ailment Accumulator. Playing as Nurgle, collect 5,000 infections. Yeah, that was a bit annoying. I mean, that just happens over time. You can just, like, spam the end turn just to, just to save up 5,000 infections. Um, but I'm pretty sure that means... 5,000 infections total over the course of a campaign, not um, not save up, a to like store up 5,000, because that would take a while. Um, the Flymaster cometh. Playing as Nurgle, recruit a great and clean one into your armies. Um, pretty easy to do that. It just takes a bit of time. I think you need to get a tier 5 settlement. Uh, you need to wait for a full cycle to pass with that building, and then just shove the great unclean one into one of your armies. So that, that does take a while, but it's not difficult to do. Uh, playing as Nurgle, replace a Herald of Nurgle with an exalted great unclean one. Again, Get the Herald of Nurgle to tier 15, um, wait the next turn, then um, the uh, you'll get the Dilemma. Just choose to replace it with the Exalted Grand and Clean one, and then that's done. Angel of Disease. Playing as Nurgle, spread a plague. That should that should just happen naturally throughout your campaign, so that doesn't need any <laughs> doesn't need a guide on that. Uh, Elements of Decay. Playing as Nurgle, unlock all of the plague ingredients. Um, pretty easy to do that, um, especially if you know how to cheese the plague system. What you can do is start a plague, create a new army, and then just transfer the plague back and forth. You can do it like six or seven times um, every new plague that you create, and that'll unlock um, most of the symptoms. And then there are, I think, four or five symptoms that you have to unlock via technology, so just beeline for those. But not difficult to do, just, just play throughout a campaign. You should just do it naturally, and just make sure you're doing the plagues. Uh, volcanic Vehemence, uh, playing as the Yoga Kingdoms, construct the Fire Mouth. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. You just have to go to the, where is it? The Fire Mouth. It's a tier three, tier three um, uh, landmark. Pretty easy to do, very worth getting. Um, 
But yeah, that's where that landmark is. You can get that very early on the campaign playing as Greasus. If you play as Scrag, you're probably not going to get that one done anytime soon. Um, Billius Builder, uh, playing as Ogre Kingdoms, deploy five camps in a single campaign. You can do this in one turn by deploying a camp, demolishing it, deploying a camp, demolishing it. Since there's no cooldown on demolishing camps, basically, get 10 grand, build five camps, done. But that being said, if you just play a campaign naturally, you'll get this done anyway. So you don't need to cheese this, but if you absolutely don't want to play as Ogres, you can get your first camp by tier, by, uh, by turn um, four. And then just have Greasus, you know, build and demolish it. As long as you've got 10 grand, it's, that's very easy to cheese. Or, or like I said, just play the campaign. Uh, trading Raider. Playing as Yoga Kingdoms, destroy a caravan belonging to Cathay. Okay, so that one's a little bit trickier because you, uh, the caravans move around really damn quickly. So what you actually need to do is stand in a position where... Uh, where caravans will naturally stop off. So there's a position like here... I think there's a position here, but anyway, you can sort of memorize. What what you do is play as Cathay, memorize the the stopping locations for say Miao Ying's caravans, and then memorize that for Greece's campaign, and then just park an army near where you know a caravan is going to go by eventually. Wait for that caravan to come by, and then on the turn that it shows up, declare war, get the caravan. But yeah, there's no special bonus from actually defeating. A caravan, you don't get like an additional amount of money. You do get loot money, but it's it's. I don't think you get a bonus because it's a um, a caravan. I didn't see anything particularly special about that. But yeah, that's what I did. I just memorized where most of the uh, the ca the uh, caravan drop off points were, and then just sat by one of them. Showed up after a little while, and then I took it out. Uh, votive uh, victuals, playing as ogre kingdoms, offer a tribute of meat to the great moor. You can get this done on turn one. Uh, just press that button so that you can like uh, offer meat for 10 melee attack, 20% uh, campaign movement range, whichever. You do that with Greasus on turn 1. Super easy to do that. Um, Royal ranks ramped. During the prologue, fill Yuri's army with units. Okay, so there's actually prologue uh, campaign achievements. There's actually quite a few of them. What this means is just get a full stack, right? Um, with, uh, with Yuri's army, which will happen as you progress throughout it. Mortal Wound Inflicted. During the prologue, win your first battle in the Chaos Wastes. That'll just happen as you play the prologue. Um, establish and advance. During the prologue, construct five buildings. Again, that'll just happen as you play the prologue. End of the beginning, complete the prologue. It's not too long. You could probably get through it in a couple of hours, especially if you're auto-resolving a lot, which you absolutely can, because the prologue is set to easy difficulty by default. Um, Enchanted Arsenal. During the prologue, equip you with every type of magical item. What that means is just make sure he's got an equipment slot filled um, in, in each of his slots, that's all. Easy to do, you'll get you get the equipment eventually. Uh, two Noble Heads. During the prologue, recruit a second Lord. Easy to do. You'll be able to recruit your second Lord uh, usually around the, the one-third mark of the prologue campaign. I mean, you can do the entire prologue with just one army, but you are prompted to recruit a second Lord, so that'll just get done naturally. Reverser of Ruin. During the prologue campaign, capture a settlement in the Chaos Waste. That'll just get done naturally. Spires to the Sky. During the prologue, fully upgrade a settlement. So that means get to tier 5. Um, that'll just happen naturally. You just hit end turn enough. Um, the end turn times are very quick on the uh, on the prologue, so very easy to do. Self-improvement. During the prologue, spend 10 skill points. So just get Yuri to rank 11. That'll just happen naturally, and then spend those skill points. Uh, Opus Eternal, playing as Solanesh, construct the Pandemonium. Okay, the Pandemonium, sorry, Pandemonium, is here at the Withering Fortress. It's a tier 5 landmark. It's okay, provides control plus 2 faction-wide. Um, but yeah, that's where it is. You have to take the Withering Fortress, get it to tier 5, and, and then build it. Okay, playing as Slanesh, recruit a Keeper of Secrets into one of your army. So get to tier 5, recruit the unit Keeper of Secrets into one of your armies. Uh, succulence selected. Uh, playing as Slanesh, replace a Herald of Slanesh with an Exalted Keeper of Secrets. So you can see there's quite a lot of repeat achievements here. Recruit, uh, get a Herald of Slanesh to rank 15, and then do the Dilemma and get the Exalted Keeper of Secrets. Um, that's probably Exalted Keeper of Secrets are arguably one of the best uh, exalted uh, demons of chaos um, generals, so well worth doing. Um, purveyor of perversion, playing as Slanesh, spread a gift of Slanesh. It's so easy to do, all you have to do is win a battle against a lord or a faction leader and that'll get done, or do a hero action against them. Super easy, it'll get done. Remember guys, don't research that technology. Um, 
can't remember what it's called, but the one that provides you with plus 25 devotees per gift. Do not research that. That's still bugged. Okay. Uh, Temptations Troops. Playing a Slanesh, summon a disciple army. Uh, yeah, you can do that essentially on like turn three. It's a, a little button. When you select an army, I'm not playing a Slanesh right now. But it is missable, so let me just find an army. Where, where have I got one? Oh my god. Let me just find one. There's a little button down here when playing a Slanesh. Um, it costs 300 disciples. Um, yeah, just do that as early as possible. The disciple feature is really good, so that'll get that sorted. Okay. So, playing a Cinch, construct the Symposium of Change. Okay. The Symposium of Change is a tier 5... Um... Tier 5 uh, landmark at the Crystal Spires. Now, if you hover over the landmarks here, it'll actually tell you um, where the landmarks are uh, a special location to particular factions, so it's an important uh, to cinch. However, if you do it here, it just says strategic locations. So yeah, going across all of them on the actual campaign map there, you can see who owns which landmark. But yeah, the Symposium of Change is right there. It's not a very good landmark, but you know that's where it is. Uh, playing of Cinch, replace the Herald of Cinch with an Exalted Lord of Change. We've gone over this. Tier 15, then you get it. Um, playing of Cinch, unlock all the changing of the ways action. So that is a little bit time consuming because you essentially need to finish most of your tech tree. But yeah, you just need to go through the various techs, uh, tech branches and unlock every option in the changing of the ways. So that will be a little bit time consuming. It's not difficult, you just need to get to, I don't know, maybe turn 80, you can do that, I think. Um, but Cinch is able to increase his research rate quite a bit, and if you beeline for it, you can probably get it a bit quicker. Uh, Eastern Emperor, playing as Cathay, win a single-player campaign. Eastern Emperor, playing as Cathay, win a single-player campaign. Alright, so, here's the thing to note. This is actually just a um, text bug. Somebody just copy-pasted the same thing. This one here is actually playing as Cathay win a single player campaign on very hard or legendary difficulty difficulty okay be, be warned about that these are not the same achievements now here's the thing I cheese the crap out of doing these ones here's what you do and this will make this campaign here make sense all right so if I just load up the campaign this will make sense what what we've done here some of you will probably identify exactly what I did and at 100% works I started a campaign up on easy difficulty, played through the entirety of the campaign on easy difficulty, order resolving everything, basically just beeline and getting the stuff done. Then on the very last battle against Bellacor, switch it up to very hard battle difficulty. Sorry, very hard campaign difficulty. Doesn't have to be on battle difficulty. Um, very hard campaign difficulty, save the game, hit end turn, fight the battle. You get both achievements for winning the campaign and winning it on very hard campaign difficulty. So. I did that with every single faction except for Cinch, because I actually did that one on Legendary. So, again, that is a cheese. You don't have to do it that way, but if you want to get all the achievements and do it on very hard campaign difficulty right from the get-go, it's very time-consuming. I am I was able to um, get the uh, full campaign on easy difficulty done within about two and a half hours, rushing it like like really quickly there's obviously things you got to do like going through the realm of chaos you just have to do that stuff um and so you just got to get through uh, to at least 120 turns uh but yeah it's easier to do on easy difficulty and it's, it helps to get a doomstack because you have to fight that final battle uh, manually uh, and bringing a doomstack allows you to fight that battle a bit quicker Okay, so playing as the Demon Prince, win a single player campaign. Playing as the Demon Prince, win a single player campaign on very hard or legendary difficulty. The fact that it is very hard or legendary uh, makes it very easy. Again, play it on easy difficulty, then at the very last minute, change it up to very hard difficulty. You'll get both done. Playing as Corn, win a single player campaign, win it on very hard or legendary. Again, same process. That's exactly what I did here. It 100% works. I don't think they're going to patch that. Creative Assembly usually doesn't give a spying fuck about making these achievements uncheesable. Usually you can get these achievements done with, with mods as well. Um, but mods aren't... I don't think mods are available yet. But if you're watching this video like, I don't know, two years from when it's recorded, you can use mods. I, I've, I've used mods to get achievements in Total War games in the past. Uh, just, just to get it done quickly, because I can't be asked. Uh, so, Kislev, win a single-player campaign, win a very hard or legendary. Again, same thing. Okay, win a single-player campaign on legendary difficulty. You cannot cheese this. You have to actually 
play it on legendary difficulty because you cannot switch up a campaign from easy difficulty to legendary. Legendary difficulty is locked at legendary difficulty. It has nothing to do with the battle difficulty. You can play a single player campaign on legendary campaign difficulty and easy battle difficulty um, and that'll still work. But yeah, you've actually got to slog through a legendary difficulty campaign to do that. If you do want to do it just for the achievements, my recommendation is probably to play as um, Slanesh because Slanesh is tucked away at a corner here. And uh, the his start position is pretty easy, and all you have to do is just like just p put an end to Scarbrand one way or another, either end the war or defeat him. And once you've done that, you don't really need to go to war with anyone else, and just hit those end turns, get yourself a Keeper of Secrets, Doomstack layer down the track, and uh, you can probably get it done fairly quickly if you do that. That's my recommendation. I did it with Cinch, and I did a full map completion, and what a pain in the ass that was. Um, but yeah, that's what you gotta do. Uh, Lord of Decay. Playing as no good win a single player campaign. Very hard. Legendary. Again, we've already covered that. Tyrant overall. Ogre Kingdoms win single player or on very hard. Yep. Try to get them both done at the same time, uh, by, you know, just switching up to very hard at the last. The thing is, the thing is as well, if you play, if you do the final battle on very hard campaign difficulty and easy battle difficulty, it actually didn't make any difference whatsoever by switching it up the campaign difficulty it doesn't make that final battle more difficult only the battle difficulty matters and since you don't need to switch that it, it doesn't make any difference at all it's the entire campaign essentially on easy difficulty if you do it that way but legend that's cheesing don't cheese it i'm just saying if you want to do it that way that's how you do it that's how i got it done so quick um playing a slanesh win a single player campaign uh playing a slanesh win a single player campaign on very hard legendary again we covered that cinch same thing uh, playing a cinch, recruit a Lord of Change into one of your armies. Uh, yep, that's easy to do. You just got to recruit the Lord of Change, uh, tier 5 unit. Playing a cinch, take control of a settlement via changing of the ways. You can do that essentially on turn 2. To, um, In fact, you're kind of prompted to do that. When you play a cinch, you start here. Um, you can take Bloodwind Keep on turn 2 with the changing of the ways. If you just want that achievement and don't want to play a cinch. So, very easy achievement to get. So, yeah. Those, those are the achievements. Um... I didn't beeline straight for them right from the get-go. I really just started rushing the achievements when I was getting close to um, time to do the review. I wanted to get all the achievements done before then. Um, so I, I was playing for a good 100, 200 hours before I even started trying to get any achievements. Oh, and also, uh, for the first week or so that I had the game, achievements weren't even unlocked. So I actually had to do things that I had already done, like the prologue campaign. I had actually already done the prologue campaign in its entirely. I had to go back and do it again uh, because um, of the achievements. But anyway, they're all available to you guys now. Hopefully this has helped you uh, to get those achievements done. If that is something that you want to do so you can show your friends how you've mastered Total War Warhammer 3, <laughs> you know, get that bragging rights. It's not really worth much, but it's up to you. But anyway, that's the end of this one. Hope that's helped you guys out. Uh, that's how you get all the achievements in Total Warhammer 3. Uh, there's likely going to be more achievements added later down the track. I don't know if I'll add extra information to this, but you know, this will give you an idea on how to cheese, uh, cheese that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.